Welcome to the Pedders Suspension and Brakes AFL Outer East Division 1 and Division 2 footy show. This week we're coming as usual from Studio B, Game Face Central in Dandy Nye. Headlines for Division 1, it's the second part of the split round we're looking at and there were two tight struggles. Emerald, magnificent performance, had their best win of the season by upsetting third place Dalton and the inconsistent Mount Evelyn. They kept alive their double chance aspirations in the finals by swamping officer in the final term. A big last quarter for the Rovers. They kicked six goals to one. G'day, I'm Dan Lonigan, and with me is the great man, the coach. Hello, coach. What's uh, been going on? What's been going on, Dan? Uh, I just want to say it's great to be back with you. Good. And I actually had a week off last week. Did you? Yes, had a bit of a break. Didn't do a hell of a lot. Yeah, same you know, I did the washing and mm. stuff like that and cleaned the apartment. Mm. Good. Uh, went a couple of couple of runs, probably I don't know, I run about ten k's a day. You can tell I run a lot each yeah. day. Yeah. How'd you go running the ten k's a day? Uh, nearly killed me. Yeah, yeah, nearly killed me. Your back's but, uh, all right. Back's all right. Back's fine. Yeah, my lower back gets sore. I'm my eight to ten every day if I can. Mm. And it reminded me of watching my son play footy today. He got absolutely crunched in his school grand final for the Northern Region. Yeah. And uh, I thought, geez, in trouble here, but he got up and kept going like a typical Lonnie, just getting on with it. Good dusted on him. himself off and moved on. Let's look at last week's results as we dust ourselves off here, Coach. Mount Evelyn, 14-12-96, beat Officer Rock, 12-13-85, a great win. And Emerald, 12-11-83, as we said, upsetting Dufton, third on the table still, but they would have been disappointed with that, 10-11-71. We'll start with the Emerald game because Stephen Mill made an appearance for Emerald. That was Game Face's match of the day, led by Matt Cox, also had the weekend off I attended uh, a function with my daughter at the William Angles College. He's this is your six foot one daughter. Six foot one daughter who's 17, interested in modelling too. For all those people out there that uh, look after modelling agencies that watch the Outer East footy show, Division 1 and Division 2, brought to us by Pettis Suspension and Brakes, but she's um, interested in event management as well. She doesn't look a bit like Dan. <laughs> Which is a good thing, because I've got a very thank you coach for helping her out. And uh, you make sure you help her out, because if she looked like me, <laughs> she doesn't they'd be like running me. for the hills, I would have thought, no, she's a very good looking girl. I think I was holding the door when Laura came into the world. But anyway, uh, yes, it was a terrific performance by Emerald on the weekend. As I say, Matt Cox was there for Game Face, did a great job broadcasting that match, and they found a way to win to beat Dufton. Matthew Boyd was in the Dufton team, Stephen Milne was in the Emerald team, and that was a wonderful day for local footy, because you had two players who got their start on the rookie list and both played the, uh, well, the first and third most number of games as far as rookie list players go in the AFL and between them 567 AFL games. Boyd's played 292, Milne's played 275, four all Australians between them, Milne and Boyd, and three best and fairest for Boyd and Boyd's also a premiership player so it was great for the comp to have those two players playing. Boyd for Dufton and Milne for Emerald. Milne kicked two goals and Emerald coach found a way to win. What a result for that football. And good on good on the club for doing it. They've had a bit of a tough year this year. I, I know uh, they've, they've been struggling, but they've been working hard on the track. And, of course, getting Milne there just adds a little bit of class, doesn't it? It does. And uh, from all reports, he played well. He did. He kicked a couple of goals. Uh, played an important role. Boy, he played well for Dufton. Uh, plays off half back or through the middle, but they just weren't able to get over the line. And they'd be disappointed with that. Certainly puts them further behind the top two. They're still, as I say, in third position at the moment, but they've got some work to do, Dufton, and uh, that's one they'd like to have back. And Mount Evelyn, well, we've seen the best and the worst of Mount Evelyn. We saw them lose to Warwick and Milgrave, the bottom team, earlier in the season. We then saw them beat Packenham, and now they've beaten Officer Rock. I know this game is a 50-50 contest going into it. Six wins, six losses. Mount Evelyn uh, did well to win by 11 points. And Officer Rock could be in a situation, Coach, a little bit like in the Sepinal last year where they made the top five, losing more games than they won. They wouldn't like to have that record. Six wins, seven losses now, and a good result for Mount Evelyn. They'd be uh, very satisfied to have that win, but their big issue has been their inconsistency, which and has plagued them all year. And it doesn't surprise me, though, that with this new competition, you know, with the, these teams coming in and some teams going out, it's, it's just, you, you, you're gonna, it's going to take, I reckon, a season or two before you find consistency. And, yes. of course, the cream's going to rise to the top. And as you and I have spoken, we've spoken to quite a few recruiting managers and footy managers with different clubs from the Arrow Rangers, and they've all said the big difference that they've noticed is that the Sefnil clubs, and especially the clubs, or former Sefnil clubs, that are doing well, 
Um, he said, come pre-season, they train three times a week. He said, he said, we're training once, maybe twice. He said, next season, I won't mention any particular names, but next season, I can tell you what, get ready for, for those uh, Yarra, former Yarra Ranger teams, boys and, uh, and girls, you'll be training th at least three times a week because in the end, you have to have your base fitness up. And that's what we're noticing sometimes is just that the, 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 the games are just, they're fading away, aren't they? They'll start well, well, well that's right. the Yarra Rangers teams, and, and then they'll fade away. So it's they'll be certainly fitness. be better prepared next year. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's been a good comp, the first division. We know the top five have been settled for a long time, but it's good to see some of the bottom teams really pushing the top teams. And uh, looking at that result between Mount Evelyn and Officer, if they play each other in the elimination final, and I'd still say that they're favourites to do that, that'll be a really, really close match, and that's exactly what we want come finals. It's going to be, d and it will depend on where it's played too. Exactly. We don't know uh, where the finals will be played at this stage. We've mentioned it before. We think Hillsville will be in the mix. You'd think that the Sefnal grounds, the bigger grounds, might be in the mix as well, uh, such as Berwick, such as Beaconsfield, Cranbourne, Narry Warren, etc. But uh, I still haven't heard from headquarters in Outer East as to where those matches will be played. But hopefully we'll know in the next couple of weeks, a couple of rounds left before the end of the season in Division 1 and Division 2. Let's look at the team of the week. Again, I chose this team. Love to get your views, good and bad on our Game Face Facebook for the Outer East competition. The back line, Donda of Emerald, Beamish of Mount Evelyn, Walkers, who's had a very good year from Dubton as a running backman. Half-back line, Rich from Emerald after their big win. Wessie Ilko of Officer and Boyd of Dubton. I think that's pronounced Wasilko. And the only reason I say that is, and he could be related, I work with a guy called Matt Wasilko. I'm just wondering if that's his brother or relation, because it's not a name you hear a lot, is it? No. Wasilko, we'll go with that. Well, I think that's how you say it, but okay. anyway, I could be wrong. Sorry about that. So, Wasilko from Officer. Dan hates being corrected on air, but no. there's only one person that can do it, and that's me. No. I get it. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to be correct. <laughs> Would <laughs> Oh, it doesn't worry me too much. I'll uh, talk about it later, Coach. Yeah, I know. Uh, what are we doing? We're in public at the moment. Uh, what wait. happens behind closed doors stays behind closed doors. The centre line Wood from Emerald, Day Doan from Dufton, and Briley from Mount Evelyn. The half forward line Gascard from Dufton, Petter having a very good year from Emerald, and Hatfield from Mount Evelyn. The forward line Clark from Officer, Kiff from Mount Evelyn, and Stephen Milne from Emerald after his two goals. So wonderful to see Boyd and Milne in that team of the week. The Ruckman, Hoskin, Mount Evelyn. Cleaver Camp is there most weeks from Mount Evelyn. And yep. Glacier from Officer, also there most weeks. And the interchange, Gascar, Dufton, remembering just four teams to choose from. Webb from Emerald. Chalkley from Mount Evelyn. And Roach from Officer. Still getting used to the First Division teams and all the players. So please let me know if I've got it wrong. No doubt I would have got a few wrong. And you mightn't be happy with some of those names. So make sure you get on the Game Face Facebook for the Outer East competition for Division 1 and Division 2. As we take a look at the ladder, a couple of matches left, of course, before the finals. You're watching the Pettis Suspension of Breaks Division 1 and Division 2 footy show. No change to the top. Mombulk ahead of Pakenham, of course, both teams having to buy. Dubton now just one win ahead of Mount Evelyn. Officer just behind on 24 points, but six wins, seven losses. A two-game gap to Emerald followed by Belgrave and Warburton Millgrove on the bottom of the table. So Emerald a chance? No, I wouldn't have thought so. Their percentage is, is an issue. They're a fair way behind with their percentage. And there's how many games left? Uh, there's a couple of games left only. So we're into the second last round. As I take a look at the percentages, Emerald's percentage is 75.79 on 16 points. And Officer... Their percentage is over 50% more, 120. Yeah. So that's a game, basically, isn't it? Oh, more than that. It's probably three games. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they can't make it, but at least they're finishing well with a good win on the weekend. Now, this week, Belgrave host Mount Evelyn. You would expect Mount Evelyn to win this. I say you would expect them to win it, but we know that sometimes they haven't quite performed as well against the bottom teams as they have against the top teams. Who do you like there, Well, coach? the word I'm hearing out of Mount Evelyn is that they're starting to get their uh, their act together at the right time and they're starting to get their players uh, ready for this uh, for the finals, that pushing into the finals. So, Belgrave, yeah, it's been a bit of a tough year for them. Mount Evelyn. So we've got the coaches' mail that uh, they're just starting to get a bit better. Right? Yes. Well, Very it's good. pretty obvious to see to the, for the naked eye that they are, but they are, have been inconsistent, but then pretty much the only team that hasn't is Monbok. And Correct. To a lesser extent, packing, packing them in. Mm. Dufton and Monbulk is a massive game. Dufton looks like, I think, it'll be two losses in a row, which won't be good for them and will allow Mount Evelyn 
should they beat Belgrave to join them on the same number of wins in the mm. battle for top three, which is still well and truly alive, going down to the last round of the season. You look at the percentages there too. Man Evelyn just ahead of Dubton, one game behind them. Dubton 119.77 and Mount Evelyn 121.30, Coach. So it's a big game for Dubton to win at home against Monbulk. I would think that Monbulk would be too strong, but... Dubton, well, they know how important this game is for them. Well, Monbog's just starting to get their players back as the finals come. And, of course, they were back on the winners' list not last week, but, of course, last round. It was a split split round. Uh, yeah, I think Monbog will, will do them. It won't be easy, though, against Dubton. Dubton will be definitely uh, wanting to, to come back strong after that loss. Officer Rock hosting Emerald. And, again, a danger game for Officer after losing last week. They just need to keep winning. As I say, they wouldn't want to enter the finals with more losses than wins like they did last year. I think uh, you've just got to uh, earn your stripes when you play finals. I know we've seen in the AFL in the top eight, and we emphasise top eight, not top five. We've seen teams lose more games than win. Mm. Not for a little while now. I think Essendon might have been the last team to do it. Brisbane did it a couple of times as well. But to me, it just doesn't sit well. I mean, you play finals because you've had a reasonable year. You've won more games than you've lost. And I'm sure that's something Officer would like to address. I, and uh, Emerald are a chance against them, but I think Officer at home. I don't think that's going to bother them as long as they get in the finals, Dan. I mean, you know, what was the year Carlton got in when Essendon got suspended? Was it Carlton who got in when they shouldn't have got in? Well, well Carlton you, actually think, won 14 games and yeah. lost 12 for the whole year. Yeah, but well, forget about that. Do you think that they weren't supposed to be in? But right. es- but they got in because Essendon got rubbed out. Oh, oh that was a few years later, 23rd, yeah, and they well, won 11, well, lost yeah, 11. Well, yeah. Yeah, but forget about the win uh, mm. for and against. Mm. Someone gives you a semi final or a final spot, you're not going to go, oh, well, I didn't really win enough games, so no, I'm not going to take it. But is it rewarding mediocrity a bit? Oh, no, rubbish. You don't think so? Get in the finals. It doesn't, care. It doesn't matter how you get mm. in. Who cares how you get in? Chances are you're not going to win, win anyway from that position. Will they beat Emerald? Uh, yes. I think they will at home. Beat Warby to Milgrove hosting Packenham, who will be looking for a big percentage booster. Been a tough year for Warby at this stage. Look like, if you have a look at the two teams, they're both on two wins. So uh, look, there's still a chance for Warby to get off the bottom. Belgrave, 57.22 is their percentage. It's... Right on 11% more than Warby, 46.21. Mm. And I would expect Packenham to win that and win that comfortably. Yeah, easy. Very good. You're watching the Pettis Suspension and Breaks AFL Outer East Division 1 and Division 2 footy show. I'm Dan Lonigan. With me is the coach. Let's take, a look. Let's take a look at the headlines in Division 2. With two rounds remaining, the race for the top five should go right down to the wire. As Yarra Glenn slid out for the time being after Powtown dominated them with 14 goals to four. After quarter time, that is, they slid out of the top five for the time being, Coach. Jim Brook remained in the five, just 1% ahead of the River Pigs, <laughs> as they were no match for the inaccurate top team, Seville, who had 34 scoring shots to 16. King Lake was too good for Alexandra, and Yarra Junction enjoyed a big victory over Thornton Ilden. Now, there's another line down the bottom there. Henry Blofeld, what they normally used to do with him when he was on Test Match Special was they would give him all this information. He used to read everything. But I'm not going to say, if you need the teams of the week, let me know, because I have provided the teams of the week because <laughs> of the earlier... What, what Dan does is he sends them to me. Yeah. I collate them, put them together, and make them all pretty so that he can actually know. He knows them off the top of his head anyway. I don't know why he's even reading it. He knows the information. But I thought I'd just leave that in yeah, there yeah, yeah. just to see whether or not he read it. And we let's be honest, we did do, it a, pr- do a previous take, and he stuffed it up. And Yarra Junction enjoyed a big victory over Thornton Hill. If you need the teams of the week, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. You just kept that in there. Yeah, I just wanted to see if you'd read it. I did read and it. And you did read it, oh. you idiot. Okay, I wanted, Nick and I, the producer, we wanted to leave it in, but Dan says, no, no, no. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, but I, I sort of mentioned it that time, but there you go. That's what, that's what blowers used to do. They used to give it to him. He'd always read it, and they'd always Did he it ever pick it up on it? I don't know. They just made sure that he would, he would read it, because they knew that he'd read it well, anyway. Why do you read it when you write it anyway, and you already know it? There's no need for you to read it. Oh, well. I just do. I have to oh, do the right I, thing. Cause you I'd put, love put to know what's of, going on inside you that You put a brain. lot of effort into hey? it. You wouldn't want to know what's going yeah. on inside. This is going to mind, no, mate. It's not. a very and, and, interesting and, and, world and, going on in there. Three words. Don't touch me. <laughs> Power <laughs> Town. 18-13, 121. Way too good for the River Pigs. Yarra Glen, 10-10-70. Thornton Hilden, 6-4-40. Thrashed by Yarra Junction, 18-17-125. Seville, got to get the kicking boots on. 34 scoring shots, 13-21-99. But they were too accomplished for Jim Brook Cocker too. 
They were profligate several, weren't they, coach? Jim Brook Cocker, two, seven, nine, 51. That means wasteful. And King Lake, 18, 12, 120. Had a very good win over a non profligate, a very accurate Alexandra, 12, 5, 77. And yay, had the buy with a couple of rounds left. I gave you profligate. You did give me profligate. Many, many years ago. Um, you watch, there's, there's a, a, a soccer commentator or a football commentator used the word profligate, profligacy in front of goal. It's just basically another word for wasteful. It's a great word. And it's a great word, isn't I it? So it. everybody, there's a word. In fact, well, let's start doing that. You know how much I love words. We might do a word of the week leading up into the final. There's another one I've there's, got off the top of my head. Verisimilitude. Who? Verisimilitude. Look that up. It means the resemblance of truth. Resemblance of truth. That means the resemblance of truth. I could go in and I could go onto a movie set and I'd go, the verisimilitude of uh, this set uh, is quite amazing. And the, of, of, of a living room, right? The, 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 the resemblance to the living room, the verisimilitude of this set is quite amazing. See what I'm saying? It's the I resemblance think. of truth. Look it up. That's a great word. I'd like to throw another P word in too. Plethora. Lots. Some people say plethora, but it's plethora. 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 Yeah, but a lot of people use that word, plethora. I like that word. You're not really getting excited over plethora. I like the word plethora. Yeah, I know you do, but I'm not getting excited. I like profligate as well. Profligate. And verisimilitude. Cool. Try and get verisimilitude into your call. We'll be calling somewhere this week. Into your call. There you go. There's a challenge. Come on. I'll do Keep that. Keep going. Dwayne Russell used to do that. He used to try and come up with a word that he needed to uh, put in every week. And he'd always find a way to do good it. Good on Dwayne. Yeah, one of the, one of the good callers, Dwayne Russell. Good, good caller. Crazy good is a caller, but he always uses the word crazy good. Now, in regard to those games, I suppose the big interest was to see what was going to happen with the top five because it's still very open. And Jim Brook Cocker, too, unfortunately, were not able to take it up to Seville. And as I say, Seville really should have won by a lot more with all those scoring shots. And Yarra Glenn would be disappointed they lost to Powertown, but... Um, it's going to be a fascinating end of the season. King Lake, a good win over Alexandra. And we know that uh, Yarra Junction were going to be too good for Thornton Ilden. So Yarra Junction in good form. But um, as we take a look at the ladder, as I say, a couple of rounds left. It's still pretty tight at the top. Several on top because of its whipping, whopping, whapping, wascally wabbit. 231 percentage ahead of Yarra Junction. Can you explain yourself what, what that, what's that all mean? Wascally wabbit is... No, but why are you saying it? Well, you said whipping. Yeah, I did that deliberately too. I left yeah. that in deliberately to see if you... Because I know he makes a big deal out of it. Out, like of, it. out of whopping well, and El whipping. Elmer Fudd is waskily wabbit. I never liked Elmer Fudd. Didn't like Elmer Fudd? Don't like Elmer Fudd. Foghorn Leghorn was the one I liked. I say, I say, I say, boy. I say, boy. I say, boy. No, 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 you can't do that. I say, I say, I say, say, boy. I say, boy. I am the hunter. Yes, I that's am right. the hunter. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, I say, I say, I say, I say, boy. I am the, the hunter. That's right. He was wonderful, Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> he was a fog. Absolutely loved him. <laughs> now, King Lake is just a win behind the top two. Say, say, Poor say, old boy. Nick is looking at us here thinking, what the hell have I got myself in for here? Oh, he's having fun, Nicky much. boy. He's just standing there. He's standing there like a shag on a rock, but enjoying every single minute of it. Yeah. King Lake just a win behind, but now four wins clear, a fourth-placed Powtown. And Powtown going reasonably well. They've won eight, they've lost seven, but they've only had the one buy, so they'll get another four points from having a buy. Their percentage, 125.55. And then Jim Brook Cocker, two on 36 points, a percentage of 119.73. And Yarra Glen outside the top five. So a monumental battle for the last two spots inside the top five. And Yarra Glen at 118.46. Then Alexandra, 28 points, starting to fall away. Five wins, nine losses. And then the bottom two, Thornton Hilton beat Yea earlier in the season. But Yea have improved a bit. And I wonder if they'll get their opportunity when they play in the next couple of weeks to try and have a win so, over Thornton Ilden. So those three teams are all still... Pal Town, Jimbo Cockatoo, Yarra Glen, all on the same points. They are all on the same yeah, points. Right. But the advantage that Pal Town has is, is percentage. Yeah, and it's also got a buy yeah. down as well. Yeah. So this week, Jimbo Cockatoo take on Thornton Ilden, and you'd think they'd win that. They need to win that. They need a percentage booster mm. to ensure that they're right in the mix to play finals. They do. To put a bit of space between themselves Who and Yarra Glen. I'm going for Jimbo Cockatoo at home. Yeah. I think they can win that. Uh, yay, hosting Powtown. 
Power Town again, they would love to just about cement their final berth mm. and be ready for an elimination final. I think they'll be too strong for Yay. Upset, Yay, 10 goals. Going for Yay? Yeah, I love the Yay. I go for Yay every week because I, I like do. But you I just, do, I will every week. Them, I love the Yay. They win by 10 goals. One day I'm going to get out there. I'll be their number one supporter, Yay, I reckon. Yeah, I think you Dan, will next year. When have you ever taken this. me seriously? You look, Dan's looking at me like I'm just being serious. Oh, well, I'm I reckon that Yay are case. a chance They're to a beat Power Town. You're still picking them? Yeah. So you think they can beat them? Yes. Very good. No, I think Power Town are winning oh, comfortably. Battle between third and second could be a dress rehearsal for the qualifying final coming up in a couple of weeks' time in second division. King Lake hosting Yarra Junction. Interesting game. I think King Lake might be able to get them at home. Andrew Fairchild, yeah. a fine forward, might be able to lead uh, the Lakers to a win over the Eagles. Oh, I'm with you. I think the Lakers just. Is that what we call them, the Lakers? We don't call them the Lakers, do we? Oh, I'm going to call them the Lakers. Dan's just coined a new phrase, a the new Lakers. term for King Lake. It's the a lovely Lakers. grand. So I went out there uh, just after Black Saturday, about 10 years ago, and they weren't going to play any. Tell us at that all. story quickly. Decide. We've got about two minutes. So yeah, tell well, us that. This is qu actually quite an interesting story. His stories are usually quite boring, but this one's quite interesting. So you go. Well, when I was with the ABC, working in their sports department, they decided after Black two Saturday. Minutes. This is, as I say, in 2009, that they would set up an FM radio frequency out there and almost have their own local programming mm -hmm. uh, to try and get the town going. And I hadn't been out to King Lake. I was asked, we want you to do something different. Don't call the footy on Saturday night. We want you to, the AFL footy, we want you to go out and do King Lake. They've decided yeah. they will have a footy team. They weren't going to. They're going to have a footy team. Go out and call their first game of the season. So I said, OK, I'll do that. And David Mackay's... Um, sister-in-law lived out there and he was going out there for the day, the former great Carlton player who should be in the Hall of Fame. He came out and called it with me. And I'm driving out there and as I say, I hadn't been out there and I just couldn't believe the way that the fire, the Black Saturday fire, was able to pick and choose what house to go through. There was one house standing and then the fence next door was standing but the house wasn't. Yeah, that's then the next does. house was standing and etc. And it was, it was all black for me. And But when I got to the ground, they were saying how much it had improved. And I had John Brumby, who was the Premier at the time, on it. He said, gee, Dan, I've been here six times. It's improved so much. Mm. I said, I couldn't believe it as I came into so town. how long after? Uh, this was two months. Two months. This yeah. was April. So it was the first round of the new football season. And I got up and won. It was, just, it was like they won a premiership. It was just mm. a big, big day. Oh, was People crying. It was fantastic. Tough time. Tough time. It was, it, but it was wonderful that I got an opportunity to do that. Mm. Had a great day. So there's no punchline. I thought there was a punchline at this. No, story. There's, no there's no punchline. Just that Christine Nixon, I spoke to her. That's right. I knew he'd drop, uh, and, drop and, I, and John Brumby, I spoke to him. It was John great. Brumby. And David McKay. David McKay. Yeah. yeah. Superstar. Yeah, to get swan. a few names in there. Yeah, he but was yeah. the guy that kicked the ball to Jezza. Jezza Linko, you beauty. Probably the most famous commentary line in the history of footy commentary, I would have thought. It was. It was. That's and number one. And Leo Barry, you starve you number two. And I reckon Sandy Roberts with Gary Ablett <laughs> back, in, back in 1989 when he said, uh, here's the magician at work. What more can you say? And Sandy said he hesitated because he thought he might have missed it. Ablett was in the... When the MCG was as muddy as it's ever been back in 89, and he just picked the ball up and he had a snap and... And what's, what was Sandy it? thought, oh, he might miss. And then what he waited. Say? He said, here's the magician at work. And he waited, thinking, oh, he might miss. No, I reckon, what more can you say? I One reckon, of the great lines. I reckon it's Yablett. When someone who, who did that? Oh, like, that was Rex. Yeah, yeah, but... But anyway, I, I thought Rex's greatest line. Wrap if, I can, it up. If, if I could just mention, I'm was, still producing, even though I'm here. Wrap was, it up. Was Jaden Post, who's now Kevin Bartlett's son-in-law, played his first game, and he said, "Here's my man, Jaden Post," and you hear in the background, Wilbur from, from Mr. Red. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's keep yeah, going. so I think King Lake will beat Yarra Junction. And Yarra Glen. And Glenn. Yarra Glen. Well, they've got to beat Alexandra. And uh, I think they can at home to certainly stay in the finals mix with one round to go. It's going to be a great end to the season. Well, this has been the Division 1 and Division 2 AFL Outer East footy show. It's been lots of fun. Some people might say you two are as mad <laughs> as cut snakes. We are. It's been thanks again to Pettis Suspension and Brakes, who do a great job for us. They've been wonderful sponsors all year. And from Studio B, the game face in Central Bandy Knot. We'll see you next week. Remember, get your game face on. Adios.